have finally found some time to sit down and to film a little podcast and have a little catch up with you because it, ha it has been such a long time. I had a look. It's been longer than what I thought, actually. Um, the last time I uploaded a podcast was November last year, so it's been seven months. That is just crazy, isn't it? Crazy. Um, and over the weekend, I put up a poll and asked what you'd like to see, if you'd rather see a vlog or a podcast, and I had lots of lovely kind messages, so thank you so much. That's really kind of you. Um, and I would say it wasn't it it wasn't a big difference actually. There was I can't remember the the, um, the amounts now, but um, there wasn't a lot in it. But podcast did was the the one that um, got the most votes. But quite a few of you <laughs> messaged me to say that um, you found it hard to pick, and actually you liked both. So what I plan to do is have a little chat with you now, and I say little. <laughs> which I know you're probably all laughing at me right away because I never do. <laughs> I never can manage to do a little podcast, can I? But I am today. I'm going to. Um, but I'm also going to try and put on um, at the end some vloggy footage for you. So hopefully that ticks all the boxes. There isn't a lot. Oh, my tummy's rumbling. I've not had breakfast, which is very naughty of me. So, but that's okay, I've got a coffee. So I better do the introductions first, just in case this is the first time you're watching me. And my name is Sheree, I'm in the UK, and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry, although I'm rubbish on Ravelry. I keep saying that I'm gonna update it, I never do. So maybe don't bother with that. <laughs> um, but I am over there. Um, and Instagram as Ollie and Bella, and yeah that's about it really if you want to know anything else just uh feel free to leave a comment down below or you can go back and watch previous episodes where i probably divulge a little bit more information but as i want to keep this short and sweet i better crack i better crack on so what's first then right i did actually write some notes down in here and I'll be honest with you, I don't know about you, but when you first get a notebook, your handwriting's really neat, isn't it? And you take your time and you write it all out neat. I tell you what, it gets to the point where you just, you just literally, as long as you can kind of like make out what it says, literally scribble on. So I did write here, it was episode 22, but when I went back to check what episode was the last episode, that was 22. So... I better, I better change that one to 23. So we are on episode 23 now, <laughs> which makes me laugh because only at myself, because um, there's, and I've been doing this for a little while really now, but there's some podcasts out there who are, um, who've got fantastic podcasts and they must, they're just so, I just find they must be a lot better at timekeeping than myself because they're on like 100 and so-and-so or 50 so-and-so or something like that. <laughs> I'm still only on 23. <laughs> it just make me giggle. I'm going to start off with current whips. I'm going to have a sip of my coffee. Although it's very, very hot here today, I still enjoy having a cup of tea or a coffee. I have made myself some some I have got, and I'm looking at it over there, waiting for it to cool down because I'm going to enjoy that later on. A iced coffee because um, I did buy when I last did the uh, coffee order with Nespresso, they had some new iced coffee capsules. I normally get the coconut one, but there was a blue one, I think it was new, it might not have been. Um, anyway, stop talking. <laughs> Current whips. Let me show you. So this is what I was knitting on a minute ago. These are my, this is the second one. These are just going to be scrappy socks. And look at that cute little stitch marker. 
isn't it the sweetest? It's a unicorn cookie stitch marker by Lindsay Simply Serving. And I just thought it was the perfect stitch marker to go with these scrappy stripy socks and they're going to be shorties. I have put a heel line in there between the this blue teal mint colour and this vibrant coral colour. There is a, let me grab the one that's finished. Yeah, that you can see where I put in an afterthought heel and these are for me. This is my first ever pair of shorty socks and it's definitely not going to be my last. They knit up scrappy socks and stripy socks knit up so quickly, don't they? And I literally had in this basket, I've got lots of um, little scraps of balls of yarn and um, I literally piled them in here and then decided which ones I wanted to use. And then I've moved them into a project bag just to make it easier. Um, and that's it really. I'm not following a pattern as such. I cast on 64 stitches, which is what I normally do for myself. I did a two by two rib for, I think that is literally five rounds. And then I think this first section, for some reason I did five but each stripe is seven rounds because I felt that it, I just felt like it looked better. I prefer chunkier stripes. I don't know if that's, you know, like a particular preference. If you knit socks and you like self-striping socks or, you know, stripey socks, how many rounds do you like your stripes to be? I think that is like the perfect, for me it is anyway, so that's seven rounds and then I just did a normal toe, normal wedge toe, I think it's called a wedge toe and then I did an afterthought heel and then on my second sock I was knitting on these at the weekend and um, I'm already up to this colour here and then I've got one, two, I've got three more stripes to go before I can do the toe so they're not going to take long at all. So that's, oh, and I'm knitting them on nine inch circulars. I did struggle a little while ago with these and I do think that every so often, depending on my tension, if I'm feeling a bit tense, um, they do, they can hurt my shoulder and my neck. So I have to be mindful that when I'm knitting with them, I need to be relaxed, <laughs> not stress knitting. <sighs> anyway, that's, that's them. What else? Now, these socks I cast on a while ago and this yarn. So the next two socks I'm going to show you are both Christmas colourways and they're both by Suzanne Greenland Kin Yarn. Let's find her label. OK, so this is Suzanne's label and this is on Suzanne's Sparkle Base and this is in the colourway Glacé Fruit. And it's gorgeous really really pretty colors and I'm knitting so I can't remember if this was Suzanne's as well I did send her a message and she think she does think it was so this is on a gold Stellina and this is silver this color oh my I would love a full skein of this color it is absolutely divine it's just gorgeous. I've done a long cuff and again it's just a two by two and I'm knitting these on DPNs. Love DPNs and um, I've got another charm there from Lindsay and I've, do you remember last year, was it last year or the year before? Before? <laughs> oh my days, I bet you've missed me. <laughs> oh. Or the year before. Um, I had a go at making the blueberry waffle socks. <laughs> My brain could not, and I've knit, I have knitted lace socks that you need to concentrate on. And, but for some reason, my brain was really struggling with, and it's a free pattern and it is base. It's just so simple. It's, it, the repeat is just two, I think it's just two rows 
rounds makes up the repeat and you just carry on doing that. My brain just couldn't. I was getting myself in a right muddle, but I've given it another go and, oh, they're gorgeous. I love the texture of, um, of these and, and how the yarn's looking knitted up. So I um, plan on getting them finished this month as well, especially seeing, seeing as it is Christmas in July. Is anybody else, anybody else joining in the fun? I was thinking maybe I could do, so I'm probably going to do afterthought heel. I, I do enjoy the heel flapping gusset, but I can knit socks a lot faster if I'm literally just knitting and putting an afterthought heel in. So I kind of like go through little phases where I'll, in, I'll just want to put afterthought heels in and it'll only be a little while before I might get bored of that and then I'll want to do the heel flapping gusset again. I do think though that visually a sock that's been knitted with a heel flapping gusset visually looks a lot nicer in my opinion than a sock that has an afterthought heel in which I will show you that in a bit however the afterthought heels fit my feet really nicely and comfortably and if it and at the end of the day they're socks <laughs> And if it means I'm going to knit them faster with an afterthought heel, I'm going to do that. Until I get bored probably and then I will want to do the heel flapping gusset. Anyway, I was thinking maybe I might do that for the heel. I'm not sure yet. So that's whip number two. These are just, you know, I've got plenty of whips to be getting on with, but these are the ones that I'm going to be reaching for at the, at the minute. Um, and then the third whip that I'm going to show you, which you would have seen if you do follow me on Instagram, you would have seen this because I've been, this is what I've been sharing a lot of recently and loving, is this um, project, which is um, my gingerbread socks. Again, it's another one by Suzanne and this was a gift. I don't know if this was a gift for my birthday or a Christmas gift. I can't remember now, which my birthday is literally just before Christmas anyway. Um, and this is Gingerbread Snowflake. And I know a few of you have hopped on to Suzanne's uh, website, her Etsy shop, and you have treated yourself to a skein of this and you will not be disappointed. It is gorgeous. Almost, I'm, all, I'm already thinking, once I've done the socks, <laughs> I'm thinking whether or not I could see a shawl being knitted in this or crochet. I wonder how it looks crocheted up, actually. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? And this is on Suzanne's Sparkle Base, and it is silver. So I have um, knitted done the toe and then I've put in a heel line there and I'm going to do an afterthought heel again on that one. So that one's finished and then I literally today will be casting on and I knit, I also um, got to say I did knit this one on nine inch circulars and I knit my socks on 2.5. So I'm going to cast the second one on today um, but I do change over to DPNs or um, Magic Loop when I do the toe. So that's that. Pop that in there. And that's just vanilla socks again. Um, two by two rib. And I can't remember how many rounds I did for the leg. I think, did I do 50? I might have done 50. And then for the foot, I so I, I think I did 50. I put in the heel line. And then I think I did 60 rounds before I started decreasing for the toe. Okay, so let's have a sip. Oh, I think I slurped that a bit too much. Now I've got a coffee moustache. I'm gonna move on swiftly and show you a couple of finished objects. I think I've already shared them on Instagram. I think, I'm not 100% sure. So first up, are my Stranger Things socks, which I absolutely love this yarn. 
it is absolutely gorgeous and this yarn is i've got the band here is a king Cole yarn and annoyingly and i am sorry i mean i struggled to find it um because it's discontinued annoyingly this colorway but you never know if you have a little look on etsy or ebay this is the label and the colorway is 3012 and it's called dolly mix um and they are four ply and they're 75 superwash wool 25 percent nylon and i absolutely love this sock yarn i love how rustic it feels it's gorgeous absolutely love it i, I just to me it just feels because it has that rusticy feel to it it's still soft but to me i can see these socks lasting a lot longer than some of my other socks like the um the hand dye jam ones because they're beautiful and they're 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 really soft and luxurious but in terms of durability i think this yarn would last longer and i think that's probably quite the case with a lot of commercial yarn isn't it um i don't know um what you think let me know if you knit socks what do you think uh, do you prefer commercial yarn, um, hand dyed yarn, a bit of both? So that's what I've got left. So I plan on making Jessie a pair of um, socks with this. And I did a two by two rib and then I can't remember how many rounds, but I wanted them quite long in the leg. And then I did the foot and then for contrast, just to add a bit of extra colour to them. My sweet friend Nikki sent me a lovely box and inside was gorgeous yarn and including these. Now I've never knit with Lang yarns before. I mean, I'll have a go at pronouncing. Oh dear, it doesn't look very dignified doing that, does it? anyway those are the colors and i've took the label i don't know why i'm putting the labels back on because both these labels have been off and i don't actually know if i've put the right label on the right one but I'll, i could tell you both colors i guess and i presume they don't have a name on them but on the back there's one that says 892 and one that says 912 and these have kind of got, they, they feel similar in the sense that they feel a bit, this yarn feels a little bit rustic, feels a bit softer. Um, and again, it's still, it's 75% virgin wool, 25% nylon. Um, yeah, it feels soft. It feels softer, but it still feels, I don't know if it's going to pick up has like a fuzzy a fuzzy halo on it so it's still quite um it feels sturdy sturdy so yeah this is in oh i mean do you want me to have a go at pronouncing that <laughs> i want to say jaw wall jaw wall jaw wall jaw wall anyway that's what I did. Happy days. And again, I did, did I say I did an afterthought heel? I do like how they fold up neatly. So, finished them. I don't know how we're doing for time. And then I finished this blanket. And the pattern I used was the Six Day Kid Blanket by Betty McNitt. Move my coffee over there. And this was using DK acrylic yarn, which was out of my stash. Oh, I've forgotten the yarn, the name of it. That's annoying. No, I can't think of it. If I do remember, I'll pop it on the screen. 
um and this is what it looks like this is this um is going to be for her birthday next month it is such a lovely pattern and i made this back in january i think it was was it january and i did a make along with my friend annie who has the little little drops wonderful podcast that was a mouthful wasn't it and we had such a lovely response to that that i think um i think we said that we might do it again next year so if you're watching this ali i think we did didn't we we said we would i enjoyed making this so much so that i started another one shortly after finishing this one and i brought down all my acrylic yarn again from the loft it's slowly i'm slowly getting working my way through my acrylic yarn now um which is good and um the girls picked out a range of colors and we were trying to get all the colors for a rainbow so we're gonna do we're gonna do i'm gonna knit knit no i told you i'm rusty um i'm gonna crochet a another one i think i'm even gonna do the same size um and i'm gonna do it rainbow which would be really cool and I love crochet, I love knitting, I love crochet, I never thought I'd ever say I love knitting, um, but I do, And um, but there's something really, really relaxing about crochet, I love crochet, I don't do it as much as I used to, uh, but when I do do it, I realise that I love it, it's, I do really love it, it is so relaxing, and if you make a mistake, unlike knitting, you don't need to start panicking, you can just unravel it, and then start again because all your stitches are closed i don't know if i'm explaining that very well whereas if you make a mistake with your knitting or you drop your knitting you you've had it <laughs> you've had it and that is when i start freaking out i have got better over the years now and i'm able to pick up my stitches but even when you pick them up and you watch tutorials online on how to pick them up and i i you know i use the method of I'll give socks as an example, you get like a little crochet hook or depending on what needles you're using, you can use your needles to try and like pick up the stitches, almost like you're picking them up, up a ladder, aren't you? It never looks quite right, does it, afterwards? I mean, they're socks, it ain't gonna matter, I guess. The same for a shawl, once, once you wash it, they all kind of even out anyway, but unlike um, crochet, you haven't got to worry so much, which is great. Um, on the pattern, the six day kid blanket, you can find the pattern on Ravelry, um, and Betty, is that her name? I think it is. She has a YouTube channel as well and an Instagram and quite often she is doing make alongs, which is lovely. And she has lots of different patterns like versions of this. So if you wanted to make a um, a round blanket, you could. That would be lovely for like a baby. Um, or if you wanted to make um, a square version, there's lots of different versions now. Um, and she also has a blog as well. So I'll leave links down below, but absolutely loved making that. Um, and did I say that I think I was rabbiting on, wasn't I, about uh, knitting and crochet. Um, if you knit with a lot of hand-dyed yarn, especially four ply, with it being so thin, to then move on to something like DK, oh, it's like it's like going on holiday. It is. It's like being on holiday. <laughs> That's probably the best way I can experience experience it. Explain it. Yeah. I'd say that's probably true. Right, how are we doing? Let's have a sip of coffee. I did have another pair of socks I wanted to show you and they were the Platinum Jubilee socks, which I knitted last month. Yeah, last month. And um, they were lovely to knit. They were absolutely gorgeous. I did put, I did share them on my Instagram and they were self-striping and they were dyed by Sarah of Stripey Cat Yarns. And Sarah has got, oh, she has got some beautiful colorways in her shop. And um, I think she also, 
I did ask her. She's going to be bringing back Nutcracker. I don't know if she's planning on doing that this month because of the Christmas in July. So I know not all yarn dyers will dye up Christmas yarn, um, but some of them will do. And I think she might have put it in her stories a little while ago. Um, but her Nutcracker yarn, oh, yeah. I think that's going to have to make its way into my stash. But she also, I think dyed up the colours that she used to dye up the stripes. She also dyed in a full skein um, where it was all var variegated or like the colours she used. So it was all mixed, <laughs> mushed it about <laughs> on one skein. <laughs> you know what I mean. Anyway, that looked really nice as well. So I think I'd quite like the stripey version and the non-stripey version. Anyway, so the next thing I wanted to chat about really quickly was a couple of projects that I cast on and then I kind of, I've lost momentum, but I want to pick them back up again and I want to get them finished. And one of them is my dotted raised shawl. And this is such a lovely pattern. And this is a pattern by Stephen West. And I'm sure lots of you have already heard of it and you've probably already knitted one or two because I can see why people would want to knit multiple ones um, because it's such a lovely pattern. It's really enjoyable. The rows work up really quickly. So I'm only on section or wedge, they call it wedges. It is a paid for pattern. You can find it on Ravelry. I'm on wedge eight. You can see I started off this lovely colour and this is a Candy Shop Yarns um, colourway. And then I've moved into this next one, which is this one. And my friend Jodie sent me this one. I might have shown this one, this yarn before. I can't remember if I've actually shown this whip. This is a truly hooked yarn. And this is in uh, the colourway Delirium. And this is on the standard socks, 75.25. It is gorgeous. I love all those um, pink and purple speckles and even the rusty yellow and the green against this pale minty colour. It's really pretty. And then I've got other colours in here that I, um, I'm going to move on to. Um, there's a picture there. I'll show it to you. You could knit one all in the same colour. Um, I mean, it'd be great for um, Advent. So I, I really fancy doing like a really scrappy one. That would be fun, wouldn't it? So hopefully next time I film a podcast, it, it, it may not be seven months, but <laughs> hopefully I would have um, made good progress on that. I'm not going to say to you, hopefully I would have finished it because there's no rush. There's no rush, but... Um, Hopefully I would have made some progress on it. And then, um, so my granny stripe blanket, and again, this was going to be one for Jessie. Um, I would like to get working on this again, because this tends to be like a summer project for me that I tend to work on in the summer. Um, and again, I've got so many scraps all in here. And it lives in here in this really lovely project bag. It's really big and it's perfect. It's like the perfect size. It's the biggest project bag I own. And my friend Nikki made this for me. Um, I don't think it was, was it? I don't think it was Christmas just gone, the Christmas before. And I love it. It is perfect. So I'm thinking I might leave this in the kitchen by the, by the door actually, because then it's something that I can just pick up when I go and sit in the garden. I'll have a little think. And that is it. I have come to the end of Rabbit and On, basically. Um, I have finished. What book did I just finish reading? It's terrible, isn't it? I had to like sieve. Um, the Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell. And a lovely follower. Um, we follow each other on Instagram. Very kindly sent it to me. So thank you, Sue. Um, I did thank Sue, and Sue knows how much I loved reading that. So much so 
that we both have pre-ordered Lisa Jewell's um, second book. Um, if you've read any of her stories, she's a UK author. Um, I would probably say, I don't know how you would explain or sorry, describe her genre. I want to say like thriller, basically. It's her books. I've read three now, I think, and every single one of them, it's one of them that when, when you hear people say, oh, you can't put it down, you cannot put her books down. And she wrote a little while ago, um, The Family Upstairs. It was amazing. And um, the second one is out today. It's being released today. And I we got it, both of us got it on pre-order. So I can't wait for that to come through the door. Um, but in the meantime, I think I'm going to start this book. And this is called The German House um, by Annette Hess. And um, I've not read any of her books before. Um, but this is what I'm going to read next. So let me know what you're reading um, and enjoying because it's always lovely to hear book recommendations. Because um, I know lots of you sometimes will leave comments down below and then it's nice for other people to scroll through if they are stuck for ideas. Um, I did have a thread up in Ravelry, but I could do with updating that really. I could do with updating Ravelry, but it's one of them that you say you're gonna do it and then you never quite do, do you? Um, but anyway, that is it. So if you've made it all the way through, thank you and um i hope you enjoyed it <laughs> i hope it wasn't too crazy for you <laughs> and i actually made sense but if you would like to leave me a comment or a thumbs up or subscribe if you're not already subscribing that'd be great and i will see you in the next one take care bye Does it have? Oh, it's got like a little card in there. Look. Which Here's one? all of them. Which one? Should we find him? He's here. I think he's called like. Bradley. Let's turn it over this way. Mm -hmm. And there's a sticker. Oh, it is a sticker. Mm -hmm. 